Well, hello class and welcome back to Be Ageless. I'm Wendy and I have a really fun video in store for you today. It's something that I struggled with when I first started doing uh, makeup after I learned from Nikki tutorials. You can see in my last video uh, my introduction to my channel and I did forget to say in that video be sure and like this video if you like what you're seeing and then subscribe that big red subscribe box and uh, we can get this channel going. I can't wait to see uh, if you guys are liking the content and I also want to hear from you and find out what you would like to know. What are your fears? What are your anxieties about going out there and buying makeup? putting it on and I do want to also say I am NOT a licensed makeup artist not an amateur makeup artist I don't do other people's makeup I just wanted to tell you guys what I do and kind of the fears that I had when I was first starting makeup because it wasn't that long ago and I think a lot of people say you know I was 18 and I just didn't know how to do my makeup right and then when I was 20 I just learned and it's like but it's a little bit different when you say I learned how to do makeup when I was 50. <laughs> now I'm kind of adapting everything to what I'm going to be doing. A lot of those things cause me anxiety. What should I buy? Uh, what are the different brands? What are the good ones? What are the not so good ones? And I have just spent the last year and a half collecting makeup, kind of trying things out and seeing what I like, trying kind of obscure makeup companies and helping them out and kind of using my Instagram account to f photograph all the makeup that I buy. Uh, so if you wanted to look at my video, my uh, collection of makeup, all my pictures are over on Insta. If you wanted to see just the photography part of it, um, I've been I've been a photographer all, almost all my life on the side, and um, I really have a passion for photography. And then when I got into makeup, I, it was so neat that I was able to combine my two passions. So if you want to look at those, head on over there. But for today, one of the things that really, really caused me anxiety, and I'm sure it did you, is that a lot of us just you know, maybe go out to the drugstore or the grocery store and buy us one of these little things that come, you know, in just a little four set of eyeshadow, nice and non-threatening, um, probably something that matches a lot of our clothes. A lot of times we like to do that. And it comes with these little sponges. And so, you know, you kind of use the sponge to, you know, wipe that on there. And then you use some other side to get the other color because you don't want them to, to you know, mix. And uh, then you may use the other, like, oh, this is a little bit more pointy. So I think I'll use that to, you know, shine up the old eye bone there. And uh, so what I'm going to tell you to do is the same thing I did. And take these little sponges right here and throw them away. <laughs> because I really had to learn to do that. And the brushes were so intimidating when I first started getting them. But now I cannot imagine using those little sponges ever again, except for, you know, other little projects and maybe some Pinterest crafts, things like that. Um, but I don't use them for eyeshadow anymore. Base. And these are just my favorites. I'm sure if you go and watch all the other beautiful, wonderful YouTube makeup artist videos out there that they will show you their favorites and how to use those. They're all, in fact, all the tutorials that I watched um, from the younger girls are really, really helpful. They never seem to talk down to anyone. They always include everybody and really explain what they're doing. They're really, really good teachers and take it from someone who used to be a teacher. <laughs> but I really, really appreciated that because I never felt like they were talking down to me or, you know, trying to use a lot of jargon that I couldn't understand so I wouldn't be a part of that world, things like that. I always felt really, really included. And that was really helpful and gave me a lot of confidence and bravery to go and buy brushes. Over time, I have found that my favorite brand of brush, and, you know, especially when you're first starting out and you want a nice, you know, inexpensive brush, but good quality is Morphe. And I just, I have, I may have every brush that Morphe has made. And recently they opened up a store um, in California and I wish I didn't live in Texas. I wish I lived way out in California uh, so that I could go to that store. Uh, but uh, I am excited to visit it one day. But in the meantime, I can go online and just buy these brushes and their brushes are so good and so affordable. And there's so many of them. And if you go on Morphe, brushes um, website you will probably be overwhelmed as well uh, because there's so many and you're not sure what you're looking for and you're not sure if the size looks right on the website and so let me just take you through and tell you kind of what I use and what I use them for first of all let's look <clears throat> excuse me that's one of the things about getting older and I have a new segment I want to go ahead and introduce on my channel it's called
episode will be about all these necklines. They just drive me crazy. And I also have the fair skinned issue of, oh, I touched it, now it's red. So I get to deal with that all the time. So I, I love when it's fall and winter because I can wear these little, uh, you know, turtlenecks to cover up those wrinkles. But it's just where things settle and they start to sag. And you know, if I was gonna get work done, that's where I would probably have mine done. It just really drives me crazy. So um, I try to keep that covered, but you know, um, I. I I know there's people that put foundation on it and put other things on it to kind of hide it. And to me, it just highlights the wrinkles even more. So I haven't done anything about that. I try to cover it all up. We'll carry it According to Livestrong.com, your neck is one of the first signs of aging and most sun-exposed parts of the body with thinner skin than the face and therefore especially vulnerable to problems like wrinkling and sagging from UV exposure and aging. Treat your neck just as you would your face and help improve the appearance and condition of your skin, reducing wrinkles and making you look and feel younger. Does your neck look like this? Or this? Or this? Oh, no, that's Mars. Sorry. Uh, but there are steps you can take to reduce the appearance of your wrinkles. Step one, make sure you're getting plenty of the nutrients you need by reviewing your diet. You need plenty of vitamin C, E, and A to maintain smooth and wrinkle-free skin. To boost your intake of these vitamins, eat citrus fruits, low-fat milk, carrots, and dark green vegetables. A multivitamin might also be a good idea. Drink plenty of water, too, as proper hydration keeps your skin supple. Step two, apply the same anti-aging creams and serums you use on your face to your neck. Step three, use a moisturizer on your neck each day. An oil-free moisturizer is best since it won't clog pores. Step four, wear a sunscreen when working outdoors that contains at least SPF 15. Sun damage is one of the prime causes of wrinkles. Step five, exercise your face and neck each day. This will tighten the muscles of your neck and pull in sagging skin a bit. Try sitting and lifting your head up toward the ceiling. While in this position, pucker your lips up like you're trying to kiss the sky. For an added workout, stick out your tongue and try to touch your chin with it. After holding it for several seconds, you should feel the tension in your neck. And now, thank you for watching this episode of What the Hell is That Now? And I'm quite sure I'll find more fun new things to gripe about as time goes on. And now back to my favorite makeup brushes, which has absolutely nothing to do with your neck wrinkles, unless you're into putting eyeshadow on your neck. So the first one that I use is the Morphe M441. And you notice how I have to be like, where's my glasses? <laughs> So anyway, this one is nice to just kind of, sh you know, shade. And this is called the crease. <laughs> I didn't know that when I first started, but, uh, and I also have hooded eyes and I didn't know what that was either, but it's this little skin that kind of over, you know, as soon as you do this beautiful look on your eyelid and you open your eyes, poof, your eyelids have disappeared and they've just gone into this little cavern that is the hood in your eye. And when you get older, you get the extra advantage of having this skin just be like really movable and too elastic -y and it's just going everywhere. So these brushes really help you um, kind of pinpoint where you want that shadow to go. So I really love this one for uh, putting a, a base color here in the crease. Um, and you can watch, you know, way better people do it way better than me on YouTube, but that's one that I like for that. And then to blend it all out, I like the Morphe M330. And this is where you can just kind of blend all the lines so that you don't have a line there. And so, you know, it just doesn't look like you drew it on. And then, the next one that I like is the Morphe M408, six, eight, it's eight. See, I don't have my glasses on. And so this one is for shading under your eye like that. And you can smudge it out and kind of make it thicker and smokier if you want. It just gives you a lot more control instead of having that line. And I almost, I almost don't even wear eyeliner anymore because this is such a nice little trick. And of course for aging eyes, uh, you don't want to have like, you know, a bunch of big lines. And sometimes, you know, some people might feel silly having that big drawn out cat line. Although if you do pull your eyeshadow up and your eyeliner up like this, the more up you pull it, uh, the more your eye, you know, doesn't sag because it's already kind of sagging because, you know, age. And uh, so then you don't have that issue. So uh, you might try it. It looks good on a lot of people right now. There's also tricks where you can put a piece of tape right here and shade over that and that'll give you a little line. And then of course you can blend out a little bit. 
and it just draws the, the eye up so that you don't see a lot of that wrinkling and you know have your eyes look even more droopy by drawing things out this way or pulling your eye shadow down this way. So pulling it up this way I've found has just really perked my eyes up and, and made them look much better. So there's that. And then the next brush that I really like is the M167. And I'll show you all these in just a second. But this one is a flat one so that you can start to pack lighter colors onto your lid right under where you did all that nice work on your crease. And so as you do that, um, I never thought that I would want to wear, sh you know, shimmers and colors like this one um, that are so light right here. Because you think when you get those little quads at the, at the drugstore, um, they tell you, put this here, put this there, put that there, put this there. <laughs> and so you do with the sponges and it just, you know, it just makes your eyelid and your eye disappear. So getting these lighter colors like these right here and then tapping them right onto here, especially just right here in the inner part of your eye, just really wakes your eye up and just makes it so much brighter. And another trick that I learned um, is, is using this brush, M508. I've got to get some glasses. M508. And you see how tiny, tiny, tiny it is? Can you see it? And this one is for this weird place. I thought I would never put eyeshadow, but it's right here in the inner corners. And what that does, and of course, you know, I can't see very well, so I think I'm putting on too much, but just a tiny, tiny bit in that inner corner has brightened up my eyes. And I have had people tell me, even no matter how tired I am or how exhausted I am or how long I stayed up the night before or right now, I think it's the middle of the night <laughs> um, when I have time to film, uh, it is just this brightening effect and it's just changed my world. And so those are my favorites. Again, we have the Morphe 441 for blending. And then to blend it out further, the M330. And then to pack on the lid, there is the M167. And then the under your eye down here, whatever that's called, the M408. And you see how it's flat. And then also for that inner corner, the M508. And it's a tiny little guy like that. Okay. And then one, oh, I forgot one. This is one that I, uh, this is another trick that I learned from a lot of the YouTubers. And this is to kind of darken this little crease in here. And I was in theater for a long, long time. And one of the things that we had to do was to learn to do theater makeup. And you learn a lot about shading and hiding and creating shadows to create age <laughs> when a, a high school actor has to play an older part. And so what ends up happening is uh, you forget about all of that when you are actually the older one, but with shading and putting a little darker color into this crease and kind of darkening that up kind of makes your eyes come out. So it makes your eye, this part of your eye drop to the backdrop. So there's this one, it is an M431 and that goes, it just fits nicely right into that crease and you can really just kind of carve that out a little bit more. So those are the things that I learned. <laughs> Don't try to do too much all at once. That's the biggest thing. I think when you start getting these and you start having fun, it starts to be, you know, a little bit more exciting and you get a little braver and you start to get more and more. But I just don't want you to go and buy like the big palette and look at all those shades and say, this isn't, you know what, this isn't me. I can't do this. And what was that brush again? Don't be intimidated. But there's so, like I said, there's so many tutorials and so many YouTube channels that you're bound to find something that will speak to you and help you feel better about doing your eyes because I never even wore eyeshadow for forever. I'd say my entire teaching career when I first started, I, I think I wore absolutely no eyeshadow. Uh, I was constantly, you know, rubbing my eyes from being exhausted all the time. And uh, I just, you know, never thought of it. I probably just threw on whatever, you know, mascara, lipstick ran out the door to get to, get to school anyway. And uh, just doing my eyeshadow and sitting there carving out a crease was not my priority. And especially if you're headed down to the drugstore or headed down to, you know, just to go talk to the deli guy at the grocery store, maybe you don't need to even wear makeup to the grocery store. But like, like I said, this channel is all about just feeling pretty and finding ways to just, you know, grab a little bit of that beauty out there because the, the you know, these young girls that do all this and these makeup artists that just make everybody look so fabulous, 
those things are accessible to you as well. You just have to be brave, like I had to be brave, and just jump right in with both feet and try it. And it has been really, really fun to create a new me, a new face, a new, um, you know, new set of eyes and new lips. And it, it's just been really, really fun to try new colors and see how I look doing this. And it's almost like your face is an artist palette. And it's really, really fun to see what you can do with it. And, you know, avoiding those wrinkles, avoiding those smile lines, whatever you want to do. But it really, really just makes you feel confident, gives you a little boost and a little uh, jolt of pretty to start your day. And uh, so that's what we have for today, are my favorite eyeshadow brushes. And so your homework for tonight, children, <laughs> is to uh, try try some brushes. Go and find some. And like I said, these Morphe ones are very, very affordable. It's like you're not going to believe how affordable they are. And are there lots of other brush companies out there? Oh my gosh, I have many, many, many brushes. I have collected way too many sets of brushes. I just got completely addicted to them. Uh, but these are the most affordable non-threatening ones to start off with. And uh, so that's what I would definitely try. So if you're in your 40s, head on over to Morphe's website. You know how to do that. If you're in your 50s, uh, go to Google and search Morphe brushes, and that should take you there. And then if you're in your 70s or 80s, um, have your grandkids come over, plug in your computer, dust it off, and have them look for Morphe brushes online for you. <laughs> and of course, I'm making fun of Grandma. Uh, but uh, we're all getting there. So I, you know, I laugh now, but I'm really not laughing. I'm, I'm like, I'm not very far from that myself. So <laughs> uh, anyway, we play, we have fun. But anyway, I hope you had a good time. I hope this has taught you a little something and I had a great time with you today. And I will look forward to the next time. And don't forget, you're only as old as you tell people you are. Cheers, bye-bye. So see what happens? You start making fun of old people and this happens overnight. <laughs>